Good evening and good afternoon. This is Reverend Aaron Simmons with Plant the Word Ministries. Once again, uh, as promised, we're going to talk about male headship as a husband, as a role of a husband. Uh, let us begin with a prayer. Heavenly Father, as we come to you once again, seeking your wisdom and knowledge is through your word, the Holy Word. Your word says that heaven and earth have passed, but your word is forever, Father God. We give thanks and praise for that in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Okay, tonight there's there's a couple of scriptures I'm going to go over um, about male headship as a husband. Um, so we're going to start with Genesis 3, 16, chapter 3, verse 16. And uh, y'all bear with me tonight. I'm trying to get my word where I need to be at. All right. And it goes as follows. Now, before I read this, this is part of the fall. And this is part of the curse uh, being put, commanded by God. So, unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. And thy sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over you. Okay, we're going to go to First Corinthians um, chapter 11, uh, verses 8. I'm sorry, verses 7, 8, and 9. Okay. I'm trying to get my word there again, ladies and gentlemen. Bear with me. Brothers and sisters, just bear with me just a little bit. You're getting it there. Okay. I'm sorry. I apologize for that. Uh, chapter 11, verses 3, verses 8, and 9. And verse, uh, verse 3 in chapter 11 says, But... I have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. Verse 8 reads, For man is not not of woman, but the woman of the man, nor has the man the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. Then we're going to go to 1 Peter 3 and 7, verse, uh, chapter 3, verse 7. Let me give him a word there. Okay. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and being hairs together of the grace of life, that you prayers, your prayers not be hindered. Okay, so I'm going to stop right there. Um, male headship is a command given by God for a husband. But the question I got to all the husbands out there that are walking according to faith now, if you go back to um, uh, First Corinth, uh, Corinth, to get back where I need to be at, and I'm gonna repeat this verse one time, one more time, so everybody hears what it says. Okay. Now follow along with me now. So tonight I'm speaking to the husbands. And I want y'all to hear this. But I'd have you know that the head of every man is Christ. Jesus Christ is the head of every man. And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ is God the Father. So the question I got here, out there for, for the husbands. Now Christ is the head of the church. He, he, he is the head of the church. He is the head of the body. So the question I got for you husbands, are you leading your family and your wife according to the scriptures are you leading spiritually are you seeking god for your family are you teaching your wife and children according to the scriptures see that's the question here because brothers and sisters you know as as i i teach this you know i know this is not a not popular in our society but this is what the word of god says I'm not saying to the husband you got to be bold macho and you know boss your wife around it doesn't say that in here it doesn't say that. Matter of fact, it says in the gospel that husbands do not defile your wife, but cherish her and love her as your own flesh. Would you defile your flesh? Your own flesh. So the question, like I said, once again, are you leading your family according to the word of God? Are, are you standing firm on what you believe? Are you seeking God in, in any situations? 
you know. So that's where you've got to be at in this walk as a husband. You you've got to you've got to lead according to the scriptures, not your own understanding, but you got to lead according to what the word of God says. And you know, stand firm on that. You know, stand firm on what the word of God says. You know, so you got to get to a point. You got to get to a point with your walk with Christ as a husband that when when you're teaching, you're teaching the Word of God. When you're correcting, you're correcting to the Word of God. You know, you, you need to be in the Scriptures and, and seeking God, and, and you know, allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you in this sense. Yes, we are the head, or the woman, as males, as husbands. Yes. But but take a time out for a minute and read what it says. But the head of every man is Jesus Christ. So the question I got for you, are you leading according to the way Christ would do it? Because if you go to the book of Revelation, oh, y'all know that's my favorite book, so I'm going to have to get there. That's my favorite book. I'm going to have to get there with it. So uh, let's go back. Let's go to the to the last book in, in the Word of God. Uh <laughs> where it talks about body about the body of Christ and I've talked about this before uh, when comparing uh, you know talking about scripture and revelation where it says that you know Christ is coming to get his bride his bride without spot or blemish his church his church. Now, in the, in the other scriptures, it just really said that Christ is the head of a man. A man is the head of a woman. And the head of Christ is the Father God. So, if you go into the book of Revelations, and let me get where I need to get at right here. Give me one second. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to for a minute. But like I was saying in the book of Revelations, it speaks of, you know, Christ is coming to get his bride as a bride being adorned without spot or blemish. And here, and I'm going to begin with um, chapter 19 in the book of Revelations. And he said unto me, Right, blessed are they that are called into the marriage supper of the land. And he said it unto me, these are true sayings. Marriage supper. So Christ is coming to get his bride, his church. He's the head of that. So like I said, the individuals, uh, husbands out there that are walking according to the spirit, are you leading your family according to the word of God? You know, you have to get to that point as a husband that, you know, the Bible tells us that God comes before all things. You know, Jesus said, if you love father or mother more than me, you're not worthy of me. If you love son or daughter more than me, you're not worthy of me. You must be able to take up your cross and follow Christ. So you must stand firm on what the word of God says. Stand firm on the word of God says, you know, as a husband, guide your family according to the scriptures, you know, be down on your knees, you know, interceding and praying for your family, you know, you know, and if you're struggling with your male headship, you, you pray that God will lead you because it said Christ is the head of a man. Christ is the head of the man, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Because if you go in the letters that were written by Paul to the churches, he said, and the woman was in the transgression. That's part of the curse, you know, part of the fall, you know, when, you know, sin first come into the earth. And, you know, Christ had to come because of that. And sin's been followed in behind it. So, so like I said, brothers and sisters, it's mainly my brothers out there. Lead your family according to the word of God. And brother says, I'll just tell you from personal experience. If you're leading according to the word of God, your wife will follow you. She will. Your children will also. 
But the question I have, are you setting the example? You know, Christ set the example for us in how we were supposed to live, how we were supposed to treat people, how we were supposed to correct. All that stuff, Christ set the example, our Lord and Savior, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Alpha and the Omega. You know, he set the example. And in the book of Revelation, he says, as a husband to get his bride. So my question are, are you setting that example, brothers and brothers out there? Are you, you know, take your place as the husband and lead your family spiritually through Christ? You know, and set the example for, for all the husbands out there that's got sons or maybe stepsons. You know, the way you walk in Christ is their example. Is their example. How they're going to follow Christ and lead their family is how you do it. It's going to be based on how you do it because you were the example. So or, or you've got to stand on the word of God and, and lead your family. Be that example. Stand up and take your place brothers as husbands and lead your family according to the word of God and by what Christ would do you know and I know in, in this culture and time you know nobody wants to hear this nobody wants to hear male headship you know and I know that but I'm going to tell you what the Lord has told me to say tonight according to the scriptures this is what it says and if we are God-fearing, Bible-believing, Word of God Christians, we have to walk according to what it says. So, you know, and us as husbands, you know, our job is to provide, to protect. You know, and you hear people say, no, no, work was part of the curse. No, it wasn't. Work was not part of the curse. Hard work was part of the curse because if you go back to the book of Genesis, this is before Eve was ever created by God. He said God made the Garden of Eden and then he made Adam, the first man. After he breathed the breath of life in it, it says that he put him in the garden to till it and work it. So your job from the beginning as a man is to provide. Is to provide. You know, and it's it's one of them them, them lessons that you teach and, and you know the culture that is not doesn't like it. But I'm 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 gonna preach and teach what the Lord leads me to do according to the scriptures. Because like I said, and I'll say it a thousand times over again, a thousand times over again. I know that this is the living word of God. You know, husbands, it says, love your wife and be willing to lay down your life for her. That's protecting as Christ laid down his life, the church, his bride, that body of believers that I talked about in several, you know, several videos, you know, and, and I'll say it, you know, the church is not a building. Yes, we fellowship and, and we worship God in a building as a church. But according to the scriptures, the church is a body of believers. You know, just like the day of Pentecost, it said they were one mind and one accord. You know, and this, go, this is touching a little bit back on what I said. What kind of mind do you have? Are, are, you, are you leading your family spiritually minded according to the scriptures? Are you doing what the world says? You know, man, husbands, wake up. Wake up and take your place as the spiritual head in the house and set the example for your son and your daughter and your wife. You know, the Bible says in, in Jeremiah, you know, for my house, my house, we're going to serve the Lord. You know, but you got to lead by that example. You know, and you can't let, you know, your mind as a husband influence, you know, be influenced by your past life after you, you know, before you met Jesus Christ. You've got to do it according to the Word of God. You know, if it's in the text, 
It's what God said. It's what God said. And I've said a thousand times, <laughs> in the, all scripture is for the inspiration of the Holy Spirit and of God. The Holy Spirit and God. This is the true living word of God. So if it says it in here, what I tell y'all before, this is the instructions to the straight and narrow. Straight and narrow. You know, and, and like I said, brothers out there, you know, you've got to stand firm in what God's word says. You know, set the example for your son and your daughter and your wife. You know, boldly declare the gospel. Set the example. Set that time and feed your spiritual man and, and pray that God will lead you will, will allow to lead you as a husband according to the scriptures you know and you know this is something that's that's near and dear to my heart also you know because you know us as husbands you know as men in this culture you know they're beat up and beat down and said bad things about it so us God fearing man we need to set the example for our families. You know, that we're putting God first and, and everything that we do is according to the scriptures. You know, it tells us to provide. The Bible says if a man don't work, he don't eat. That's what it says. Your job as a husband is to provide, protect your family. That's what the Word of God says. Set the example. Set the example as a spiritual head and feed the Scriptures. Feed yourself with the Scriptures. You know, you can't get to a point where you're like, well, you know, that that's enough. I don't need to be on, on the Scriptures with them. You know, that's, that's contradicting what the Word of God says. He said, you're supposed to teach this to your children. You're supposed to teach this to your wife. That's what the Word of God says. And don't think because of your past that God cannot use you. Because if you read the scriptures, Noah was a drunk. Moses killed a man. David had an affair. Peter denied Jesus. Paul, Paul led the Christians before he was converted he was pretty much a terrorist. But guess what? God used all of them. So don't think God can't use you. You just got to be a willing vessel and allow Christ to be the head of your, of your life. You know, in marriage in general, you must put God in it. And I'll say this a thousand times. The state did not. God instituted marriage. If you go back to the book of Genesis, and it talks, you know, about Adam and Eve. And it talks, for this cause, a man should leave, you know, leave his mother, cling to his wife, and a wife leave her father and cling to his mother. Now, we all know that our Bible-believing Christian, God-fearing Christians know that according to Scripture, Adam and Eve had no earthly mama and daddy. Their creator was God. There was nothing else, but God created them. So this was said in Genesis, God instituted marriage. So brothers and sisters, you, you know, you know, husbands, walk according to the scripture, set the examples. And, you know, other brothers that walk this road, you know, get together. You know, remind yourself daily. That you're the head, not the tail. You know, guide your family. Set the example. And I've I probably said it a thousand times. But Christ set the example for us to follow. So as God-fearing man, we should also do the same thing for our children. You know, Moses set the example for, for Joshua. And Joshua set the example for others. David set the example. 
you know, David, you know, constantly was communicating with God and asking for forgiveness. You know, these these men in the Bible, these prophets, they set the example. Jesus Christ set the example. They were led by the Spirit. Now, we know us as Gentiles that glory to God that Jesus Christ died and was risen on the third day and his blood forgives our sins and allows us to be adopted into the kingdom. And, it, and, and in this word, it says that Christ, Jesus Christ, Jesus of Nazareth, the Christ, the anointed one, the King of kings, the Lord, Lord, is the head of the land. So, so man out there, anytime you make a decision that's regarding your family, you must first seek God first. There's nothing wrong with consulting with elders in the church because they hear from God also. But you must seek God first. The Word of God says, seek. First seek the kingdom of God. And all these things will be given unto you. Jesus said, ask and you shall receive. Knock and the door will be open. Brothers and sisters, brothers out there, seek God for the answers. Seek God for the answers. As I begin to close, uh, I just want to do an altar call. For those that are lost and don't know Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, brothers and sisters out here that, that, that don't know him, this King of Kings and his Lord of Lords and the, the very same, you know, Jesus Christ as the head of the church and, and the head of our man. Then you'd like to know him. You'd like to invite that. That's Jesus Christ in your heart. And you want to be forgiven for your sins and you want to walk in this light and you want to be in that straight and narrow because you're tired of this road of destruction. Will you just please say this simple prayer with me? Heavenly Father, I acknowledge that I'm a sinner. And, and I believe in my heart, Father God, that your son, Jesus Christ, died on the cross for the remission of my sins. His blood paid the ultimate price. That way I would be able to be in your presence, Father God. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. Teach me your way, Father God, and help me walk in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. To those that said that prayer, praise God and Thank God, and welcome to the body, the church I was just talking about, brothers and sisters. Um, I'm going to make a couple suggestions. I suggest that you, you know, find a local church that's biblical teaching, spirit field. Uh, I also suggest that you, you get a hold of the Word of God, the Holy Bible. You know, you can also continue to watch my videos but I strongly suggest that you find a local church. I've got a local church at myself, Word of Faith in Kennesville, Pastor John Quinn, Pastor John Paul, Pastor Victor. They, they do a really well job out there. Um, also, those that that's been watching my video, I pray that the Word has been sown in you and God has, has brought you closer to Him. And, you know, maybe this encourages others that that you know that their boldness will spread further th through these videos that they will understand the word more um any prayer requests uh like i said leave it in the comments below any short that i have you can leave it in the comments for prayer requests um tomorrow night i will be touching on uh the biblical role of a wife um so just to let y'all know, that's what I'll be speaking on, the, the biblical role of a wife uh, in a marriage. Um, also, um, like I said, once again, any prayer request, put it in the comments. Um, other than that, I'm going to pray and dismiss us. Uh, Heavenly Father, we come to you, and I, I pray that this this word and this seed has this been planted into the good soul of Father God, and it reap a harvest, Father God, and it would bring more labors in, in for the harvest, Father God, and it, and it begin to plant more and more seeds, Father God, and your word would be spread worldwide, Father God, and people would know you and cry out to you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray, amen. Thank y'all, and good night. God bless.